I'm photographer David Dushman, and this is Vision is Better, a sometimes weekly podcast about the craft and art of photography. Welcome here. This is episode 41 of Vision is Better, and today I want to talk about the obsessed photographer. I've just got back from a couple days in Vancouver uh, with my best friend, my business manager, and my secret weapon, Corwin Hebert. And uh, one of the things he said this weekend uh, was in reference to photographers being as obsessed as they are. And he put it really well, and it got me to thinking. And so uh, I literally just got off the ferry and uh, back home and a port of beer and I want to spend a couple minutes with you because there's a couple things that are kind of gnawing at me and and that nugget that he shared with me basically said this I've never met a group of people that are so obsessed and I started thinking about that and I thought there's a, a positive and a negative to that the positive of course is that when you're that obsessed with something and you're thinking about it all the time you have the potential to really put skin in the game to really uh, dedicate yourself to your craft and if you're doing this professionally to your business and I love that I think people with skin in the game people that are willing to hustle hustle in the best possible sense and really make a go of it people that have a real solid work ethic and are always kind of go 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 I think that's really positive I think however that it's more a question of what we are obsessing over. Photographers very often obsess over other photographers, over other people's work, over other people's career paths. They obsess over other people's gear. And my feeling about this is as follows. If you're obsessing about someone else, if you're constantly looking over your shoulder at what another photographer is doing and the kind of gear that they're using and the I wish to God that I was doing the kind of gigs that they are doing, you are probably not thinking enough about yourself. Now, I'm not talking about this in terms of, uh, I'm not recommending that you become a narcissist. I think we have plenty of narcissists out there in every industry. The world doesn't need any more of them, but we do need people that are willing to focus on their own vision, focus on their own life, focus on their own heart. Um, I, what I meant to say was art. Focus on their own craft, their own art. And the reason that's hard is because if you focus on yourself, you can't blame other people. If you focus on yourself, if you figure out what your vision is and you execute on that vision, if you go and you, uh, you do your art as, uh, as consistently as you can with as much uh, rigor as you can, the only one to blame is, well, it's you. Uh, and in my case, it's me. And that makes it challenging. Ultimately, the end of the day, vision is not enough. Vision is important. Vision is the foundation of all of this stuff. You've got to feel something. You've got to have an opinion about something. You've got to want to express and explore something more than just whatever that guy is doing. That's important. That's vision. But unless you actually execute on it, unless you actually, and here's the hard part, unless you actually make decisions, because any one vision may have 50 different ways of executing and you could do this and you could do this and I don't know, what if I do this and this? I don't know and that's the hard part. That's where art is, is in making the decision and risking doing this thing. Do I want to explore uh, making a portfolio or a body of work about this? Knowing full well it may not land. It may not land with me. It may not resonate with an audience and then I'll have to take the lessons learned and I will have to scrap it and try something else. That is the iterative nature of creativity where A leads to B leads to C. If you think B is the end of, of your creative effort and the first try is going to succeed, you're probably not familiar enough with either the lives of other photographers, other creative people and their creative process. You're probably not familiar enough with your own creative process because almost no one I know goes from A to B and then washes their hands and says, I'm done. Most people I know go from A to B to C and then there's a lot of swearing between D and F and then there's more hard work and somewhere between LMNOP you get something that kind of goes, hey, you know what, I'm beginning to get the hints of something that might work for this body of work. I see now where that body of work is taking me. If you wait with, just with your vision and you hold your, your precious vision and you wait until you got it all figured out before you can go from A to B, it'll never happen because it, A and B is not where the magic happens. A is the action and B is the next step. But as I said, there's a lot of steps in between where you're going to screw up. You have to give yourself that time and energy. And here's where I loop back to that first bit about um, 
other people. If you are looking over your shoulder at other people, you are not looking ahead. You're not learning from your lessons. You're not uh, falling down and, and bruising your knees. You're not engaging in the creative process enough and your vision doesn't mean enough to you. Your vision should be so important to you that yes, of course you're going to look around and out of curiosity, see what other photographers are doing, see how they're doing it. Hopefully you love photography enough that you see that work and you're inspired by it, but it doesn't have any effect necessarily on you know, changing your, oh my God, they're doing this. And then you go here and then, oh my God, they're doing this. And you go here, hopefully. Does anyone else see that? There's like this giant spider. <sighs> I'm, I'm not even going to cut that out. I'm just going to, uh, <laughs> I, I kept seeing this thing out of the corner of my eye. Uh, I, hopefully you have got enough of a sense of your vision and enough drive that you're willing to go from A to B to C to D without those distractions like the spider. Let me get back on track. Your vision is should be significant enough to you and hard enough for you to figure out, to discover and to execute that you have no time to look over your shoulder with envy or jealousy or uh, any other emotional reaction other than, oh, that's interesting, maybe I can learn something from that. But that's, that's a side thing. That is not the task of a photographer. I am well off course on what I intended to say, but I think I'm beginning to hit the heart of the matter and th that is this. You need to figure out your vision part of figuring out your vision is going to be picking up the camera and executing and failing and then executing and failing because where you get to will be so different than where you begin that if you are waiting to figure it out before you start executing and engaging in the hard work, you are always going to be looking over your shoulder at what other people are doing because you're going to be waiting for a better idea than the one that you seem to be able to come up with. Listen, that better idea is not coming until you pick up that camera and get out into the real world where you and the muse can sort of duke it out for a little while. This applies to photography as a craft. It applies to photography as a business. Stop obsessing about other people's gear. Stop obsessing about other people's career paths, stop obsessing about how great they are or how lousy they are, and stop worrying about which gear other photographers are using. Make some choices and then, yes, some of those choices may not be the best ones. You'll figure that out. You'll fall on your knees. You'll get up. You'll dust yourself off and you'll try it again. But it's there wherein the art lies. It's there making those choices where you say, I'm going to do this, not this, that artists are made. I'm not precious about the word artist. I don't think it's spelled with a capital A. I just mean we're in the business and in the life of making art, the things that resonate with people's hearts, the way that we tell our stories and the way that we, I hope, change the world. And you're only going to do that if you're focusing on your own vision and the uh, expression of your own vision. That's hard enough without looking your, over your shoulder at other people and how they're expressing their vision and wishing that yours was a little further along. Because most often when we're looking at someone else and we're wishing that we were like them or our art was like them, we're, look, we're looking from perspective of we're still at A, B, and C and we're just figuring it out and they're way down the track at Q and we're thinking, I wish I was more like them. The only thing that will get you to be more like them if that's at all a noble goal is getting from A to Q and that takes the hard work that takes vision and decisiveness and being willing to risk that's the hard stuff and fail I hope that's helpful to you we'll see you next time remember gear is good but vision's better take care